people think those stories are like not real. Like those stories are real. Like I remember watching one game we were got we were getting ready to play the Lakers, and I remember just you know I'm I, I'm a Kobe fan. I'm watching him warm up, and he literally entire warm up he did he did one shot. He was in the mid post. He just kept turning over the left shoulder over and over and over. So I go into the game like, okay, he about to turn over the left shoulder over and over. And I couldn't stop it. But like, he, I just watched him by himself. They just kept giving him the ball for the entire 15, 20, however long you're out there. He kept doing the same thing over and over and over. And I was just amazed that, and then once the game started, I still couldn't stop it. And I knew what he was about to do over and over and over again, you know? <laughs> and that's just, that's a part of his greatness, man. When you played against Kobe, did you wear his shoes or did you wear a different shoe? Vince was like, you know, I'm supposed to wear my you know, opponent, opponent's shoe or blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so the next time I played Kobe, I wore some Jordans. The wrong fucking bang I should have did. As soon as I walked <laughs> on the court, as soon as I walked on the court, Kobe was like, Oh, that's what we doing, motherfucker? And didn't say nothing to me the rest of the game. Right? Hey, hey, you just <laughs> sounded so much like him right there when he said that. I'm that's what we doing, motherfucker. Yeah, you sounded just like Kobe right there, dude. That's crazy as hell. His last game, <laughs> he dropped 60 on the Jazz. Yeah. You guys weren't going to be in the playoffs, so everybody knew it was his last game. Right. I looked up the box score earlier today. He got 50 jacks up that game. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine? Could you oh imagine my God. 50 shots in a game. Dude, if I could, I would love to get 30 shots in a game. <laughs> Actually, at this point, I'd love to get 10 shots in a game, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to imagine like the conversation. Like, was it unspoken? Or did you guys say to him, like, Kobe, Kobe, go for it? Or did he say, yo, I'm shooting every time tonight? Like, or did it happen organically? He didn't have to. He didn't have to say it. <laughs> he didn't have to say it. It was spoken between us as players. It was like, "Yo, he's getting every shot." Like we knew that. Like we said, "Yo, we pass him on the ball every time." So, and it, it started off rough. Like if you watch the game, like he, I don't know, he probably first fifteen shots, he probably made two. Like <laughs> so, we were, we were worried. Uh, but man, he flipped that switch, bro, and it was like really, like it was like. One of the few times all season I seen like the real Black Mamba come back. It was crazy, bro. Like he he just had a certain energy and presence about him. He was, you know, doing the with his teeth and all that. Like I'm like, yo, like dude is going crazy. So yeah, it was definitely unspoken. It was actually a funny a funny home. He had took the ball out. He had inbounded to me, and I was like, yo, I'm about to come out. I'm shooting this time, whatever. And he was like, yo, MF. Like he was like. If you want everybody in this arena to boo you, go ahead. But you better throw me the damn ball. <laughs> so, I was like, yeah, you know, you're right. And, uh, you know, that was just a funny moment from that game. But, yeah, it was definitely it was definitely unspoken. And then after he was like, yo, he was like, y'all lucky I'm retired. Because he was like, if I was in my prom, bro, this is how it would be every night. You're going to throw me the ball like this every, <laughs> every single night. <laughs> so it was dope, man. It was dope. Cause I would always like to test Kobe's temperature. You ain't gonna do nothing tonight. Go out and get. 40. You ain't gonna do nothing. He go out and get fifty. So his last game, I was like, "Hey man, I need you to get 50. He's like, "Man, I'm too old for that." I was like, "You know what? You are old. You can't get fifty. And he went out and hit sixty. And look, he's been doing that since 17, 18 years old. And that's why you know he's one of the greatest. But uh, he was definitely happy. Uh, beautiful family, beautiful wife, beautiful kids. Uh, you know, he was doing well in business and. No, everybody, you know, was happy for him. No, but I, I, I was like, You guys got into it. Yeah. So what I'm saying was, so how did that end up? Because you ended up with him the next year. Yeah, my brother. I so how did that happen? Year. So check it. So me and Cole, Cole is, you know Cole is nice. You know he Cole kept, is nice. He keeps he elbowing me. Elbowing. Yeah, he elbow. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Same he, thing. And he was fucking me up. He hit me right here one time and knocked the wind down. That's the, the way I almost tried to fight him that game. But we've done the same thing right. too, right? To people, right? <laughs> so at this point, I, I get it. But I went to the ref, man. That's Cole's my boy. But I go to the ref, I'm like, yo. Did you not just see him do that? You know, I was like, he said, no, I didn't see it, right? So I go to Kobe, I'm like, my brother, I don't like, yo, don't you ever do that again, my guy. Right? Blah, 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 right? And then Kobe don't care. Kobe focus on the gang, right? Kobe's a, Kobe's a killer. <laughs> a different kind. He different, right? And that's, I look up to Kobe, right. but we on the court, so it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. So um, like, I never thought I'd be having an opportunity to win a title after all the shit I've done league so it was just crazy i'm just trying to do the right thing I, you know i am doing the right thing at this point i'm 29 years old so 
practice was very competitive right mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. You know how Kobe is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, we was drawing. We had it going sometimes, you know, uh, which I, I miss those moments with Kobe and him just playing very well and working hard at 5.30 in the morning, seeing him. And the first year we got a ring, you know, and that was it. It was so hard. One ring. Mm -hmm. Stack got one. Mm -hmm. You got two. Well, so, you know, I got one. You because got one. so I came the next year. So the next year, remember when the Orlando shit happened with the ball fake, I come the following year. But I just remember excited about playing with Kobe, but excited about playing with you too, because I thought between us three, we're the three of the top five, ten peri perimeter defenders in the game. So it was yeah, just like, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. So I remember when Definitely. me and Ron would be out there oh, yeah, kind of yeah. doing our thing, and, and someone might <laughs> get a bucket or two, Kobe would always, man, I want to fucking take him. And then we would always try to argue oh, with we him. Would like, yeah, we would too, try yeah, to yeah, argue with who was going to take who. In, uh, in the finals, Indiana. I was killing, got into foul trouble, and it was one of those games that if we lose, Indiana may get the momentum, they can win the championship, but Kobe, during the timeline, he's like, big dog, I got you. Just sit back and enjoy the show. It was the most impressive five, six, seven minutes I've ever seen. That's when I got to press conference and said, this guy is, you know, the best player in the world. I've only seen one other guy say what he was going to do and go out and do it, and that was Michael Jordan. So. You know, at that point, look, look, I already had respect for him, but when he did that during, during, during the finals, I was like, he's ready. My favorite cold moment was when both of us was in New York. At the All Star game, yeah. Woo! How good is that, though? We're here now, baby. Hey. We're here now. And I think I'm, if I'm 20, then he's 19, 18, something like that. And I think this is his first start in Madison Square Garden. I remember how nervous we both was, and I had obviously played in one uh, All-Star game before then, and we were both pretty nervous. I mean, uh, you know, people was making a, a real big deal about it, you know, he and MJ's matchup, and it was just classic and epic. And I'm glad I was front row and center to be able to not only, not, not only experience that moment, but to say that I was there. And um, the two of us kind of, you know, just formed a little bond, man. I'll never forget, I threw him an alley-oop, I always call it. They out of you from God. To Garnett. Back to Kobe. Oh! Kobe and Garnett. Because I threw it too high at all. What I thought it was too high. He went up and caught it. Not one hand, but two hands. But I can remember both of us having a, a really cool time, a really fun time there. Uh, not just because it was Madison Square Garden, but because of the two that was involved. I well, always like to say Kobe and I have always shared a, a special relationship, and you know it's nothing but love on the side. And that's real. Kobe, you've been a blessing to all of us, man. Not just to the game, but to the sport. I guarded Kobe in the garden, which I can't remember how much he had, but I know I had multiple steals against him to where in the game, all, in my head, all I'm thinking of is when I have this conversation with my brother after the game, how I'm going to tell him how I stole a ball from Kobe, how I stripped Kobe before he was going to take a shot, how I drove by Kobe and got a dunk. Like, I'm thinking about all these things in my head. I'm like, so geek. Fourth quarter starts. <laughs> And Kobe said, you had a great game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But I'm looking like, it's 12 minutes. What you talking about? <laughs> like, what you, what was that? You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't said nothing the whole game. I've been talking shit. I done stole the ball. I'm hyped as hell. It's Kobe Bryant. He ain't said not one word to me. The man come down. You remember he came, shot fake, shot fake, threw it off the glass, caught it, threw it to the corner. I'm like, bro, what you are? <laughs> Drawn upon T-ball the way he's uh, living his life, is the way he wants to live his. Here's Bryant off the board to himself, back to Powell, scores! What a play! Kobe Bryant to Powell! Like, bro, you've been regular all game. <laughs> shot. Get to the spot, shot fake. Spin, pivot over here, spin back on the foot, drop it off the glass. I'm like, bro, what's going on? And then wow. he pulled up from like 35 feet on some Steph Curry shit before yep. Steph was doing that. <laughs> he pulled up and laced it. I'm like, they called a timeout. Dan Tony looking at me. I'm like, bro, I ain't. We were in Portland. We're playing Dame. I think, I think Dame had, the start of the game, I'm guarding him. They're like, you're going to guard Dame, accept the challenge. I'm like, oh, cool, let's do it. So we're out there, and I'm just like in awe, like, it's Dame, you're literally, wow. So I, I'm still in awe through maybe the whole first quarter. I'm in awe. This dude pulls up, deep ball, three, come down, foul on me, and one, look up, D 
deep ball three, another one, another one. Just back, it just it looked, it felt like it was just all out. And I was on this island by myself. Like no one, no one was there to help. Cove, they call timeout. Cove looks at me. He's like, "What you want the motherfucker to have fifty? And I'm like, "I don't even know what I, I was just like, I, I, you know, one of those." Cove goes out and guards him. This is when I saw. First of all, that was my welcome to NBA moment. Just Dame fucking having, un, I don't know what he had. But then seeing Kobe guard him and just beat him up, basically. Like, they weren't letting Kobe foul out of that game one. And he just beat him up. He probably had 50 on me and in his game with probably 50. You know, like, just Kobe just, he shut it down. But I watched the refs kind of let Kobe beat the shit out of him to do it. And I was just like, man, that's, that's just reputation, one. And then two, like, damn, refs really <laughs> control the game. I hope I'm fine from saying that, but... <laughs> They control the game, you know. So it was just that was that was just cool to see that. That was my first year for sure. No, it was we teamed up and became friends on, on odd circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know the, uh, the the infamous ball fake in Orlando, uh, <laughs> where everyone you know we were about to fight and whatever happened happened. That no summer, flinch. right? That summer in free agency, he, I get a call from him. Like, hey, you want to be a Laker? And I'm, I'm a lifelong. I grew up, Magic Johnson's my favorite player. You know, I'm from Northern California, but SoCal's adopted me. I've been here half my life. So to get a call from Kobe, like, hey, you want to come be my teammate? And anyone crazy enough to F with me is crazy enough to play with me. And I'm just like, <laughs> I earned that dude's respect. And we, and we became, you know, more than teammates. We became brothers after that. Our shit, too, was our shit was a little bit of back and forth talking that situation in Orlando with the ball fake, but it was more... The grabbing, the elbow in. I caught a tip dunk that he tried to block the white shot and he left me open and I went and tip junked and I was coming off the rim and motherfucker tried to elbow me on my nuts. So it just came to a point, like you said, <laughs> where he fouled you right in front of the refs and the refs act like they motherfucking Ray Charles at the time. Like, bitch, you know you motherfucking saw that. Exactly. Right? So it came to a point in Orlando where he was doing all this dirty shit and I would get caught retaliating. So I got a me couple too. fouls. I got one T. Uh, but it's bullshit, like you said, because you got to do everything you can to stop him knowing goddamn well. I know in my situation, he took like 30 shots that game. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> motherfucker, it takes, it takes me six job. games to get 30 shots. You know what I mean? So it was tough. But battling him is always fun. But I used to tell people guarding him, he tries to mentally fuck you, too, because physically, you know, there's it, it, it nothing much you can do with him. But he tries to get that mental battle, too, whether it's talking shit, elbowing you, Getting grabbing you. You know, the pump faking you 18 times and then you jump and he barely slit, you know, <laughs> slides against you and the ref calls a foul. So it was a motherfucking battle, just like I said. But that was my favorite. Whenever I played, I was just like, hell yeah, I get to play Cove tonight. You know what I mean? And my whole thing is you're not going to start great offense with good defense regardless. You just want to make them work for everything. Make it difficult on them. Make them work. You know, no easy, no, no easy layups. You go to the basket, I'm going to foul the shit. I'm not giving you no easy layups. Um, I'm gonna make you work for everything, and if you make, if you make, <clears throat> if you even not having 30 points, I want you to take 30 shots. You know, me personally, I got some two stories that I would like to tell about Kobe. Is that one? I remember when I uh, we had beat them in the finals, and I'm in Las Vegas. I don't never go to Vegas, but I'm feeling myself as a champ, as you should be. And uh, I go to <laughs> Vegas, and I'm sitting outside this spot. I'm getting ready to go to it, a nightlife, and you know, I see. Like three guys walk by me with suits and you know the, the ear plugs or whatever, and, and they walking fast, and I'm like, dang, that's Secret Service, the president here. Then I feel somebody come from behind and bow hug me, and I'm like, hold on, man, what's going on? You know, I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, I'm about to go sit down in the county or something for a little bit. But it was Kobe Bryant, man, and it was Kobe, man. He like, Perk, what's up, boy? And and mind, I tell you, this is my first time ever having a conversation with Kobe, and he like. Man, I just want to tell you, man, hey, man, it's all respect. And I tell people this all the time, man, you one of the best post defenders that I ever s played against. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. I'm sitting back like, dang, Kobe gave me a compliment. <laughs> I walked up in the club like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, man, like, I, I, I was that dude. Yeah. I was that dude. Yeah, you heard him. Bought him. an extra bottle yeah, for that. You yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying, man? Yeah, yeah. Cole, Cole came up to oh, me, yeah. man. I, I'm, I'm him. Yeah. I'm him today. But, yeah. you know, and then it was another situation where it goes to show you how great of a guy he was off the court to the competitive nature he, he had on the court. So I'm in Oklahoma oh. City. I'm in Oklahoma City. <laughs> I switch out on them on the pick and roll. It's five seconds. You know, we're on the defensive end. So, you know, I'm feeling my, let me see it then, Cole. Right? I clap my hands. He hit me with a boo. I stumble in and out of something he hit me with. 
Stumble, he hit the three. <laughs> we running back down court. He like, all right, Perk, don't make me tear that other ACL. I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but you had to respect it, man. You had to respect it. It's probably my third year I was in San Antonio. Uh, and I'll, I'll never forget, uh, Coach Becky, it was her scouting report. And I remember she called me, I was at the house. She told me I was gonna start. Tony Parker was hurt. And uh, she told me that uh, I was gonna start. I hadn't played in a while. And then I remember all she could say was, make sure you stay down on the pump fake, stay down on the pump fake. Two times. <laughs> I could not stay down on the pump fake. His pump fake is so, it's so like pure, so natural. It looked like a, it looked like getting into the motion of his shot. There's a picture actually on my Instagram. I come down, foul him hard, hit him in the head, and one. Uh, then again, next time I stay down, there's another picture on my Instagram. Uh, he drives, shot fake, I stay down. He just he just rises up over me. I can I can test hand on the face. You see my elbow hitting him in the nose, foul him, no call, cash. Uh, right then and there, he's just like being in his presence um, was special. Um, you know, I think there's two guys. Kobe and LeBron being on the court with those guys is just a it's a different feel. Um, but it was something magical about being out there with Kobe, man. It was just it was a unique unique experience. I got the opportunity to play against him, I want to say three or four times. Um, it was towards the tail end of his career. He always put on a show. Um, and it was just a blessing and honor to be out there playing against him. At home, me and I was in Philly, we was playing at Stepper Center, and I'm guarding him. And he hit me with the pump fake, and I jump, and he come through and elbowed me to give me six stitches. Six stitches. When they tell you, when he tell you not to reach or to jump, he really mean it. Yeah, Ray said that the coach, uh, Becky told him not to uh, jump on the pump. Is it impossible to not to jump on the pump fake? I mean, not now, but when you're young and anxious and yeah. you're trying to really guard code, yeah. you're going to have to, right? You're going to have to. I'm going to get this And stop. then you're going to jump for sure on the second one. It ain't like there's just one pump fake. Mm -hmm. I went on first. Yeah, I went on the first too. <laughs> Second one I, I stayed first down. Too. Well, after I got, it was, a, it was a lesson. You go down first possession, you don't jump on the pump fake, right? It's so then natural, the next bro. time he might come over the top and then shoot off the first, off a of no jump. Honestly, you don't know, cause he might not. He might be thinking, well, he didn't jump on the first one. He might jump for this one cause he didn't jump on the first one. He gonna pump fake and then do whatever. Like you really don't know what he'd be thinking. Another thing that I learned about Kobe is it really don't even matter, like, whether you jump or not. It don't matter. He gonna make a shot, you not gonna block a shot. If he wants to pump fake or do whatever, if he misses it, it's because he missed it. It ain't because of any distraction that you did. I got, I got evidence for you, man. Look at it. Look at man. So it was, it was, it was coming, right? This is right there. They're yelling on the bench. Stay down. <laughs> Look at his eyes. He, he's selling it. He's looking like he's getting into the shot. Look at me. What do he say? Young and anxious. I'm, I'm thinking I'm right there. I got more. Look, same. Spin. He's going to spin here. Set me up. I'm thinking I'm, I got him. Ah, I think I got him. Look. Cash, bro. I'm fouling him and everything. I'm like fouling him. I told you, bro. It don't matter if you can test him. Cash, and, and here he just saying, young fella, this, he ain't got no chance. <laughs> I, what, do you, what can you do, Drew? I mean, you're a great You can't do I'm, nothing. I'm right there. Nah, that's a bucket. That's that a bucket. That's a bucket, and I'm fouling him. That's a bucket. No, like I said, it don't matter if he's jumping or not. I'm fouling him, bro. I don't know what else I could have done. <laughs> I'm right there. Nothing else. That's great defense to the point where you kind of foul him. And nothing else you could do. Spin. When he played the Knicks, that was the first time I ever seen somebody do that. Pump fake, spin, throw it off the backboard, get it back to yourself, lay it in. Yeah. I've never seen anybody do that. Man. He was a guy that wanted it right away. And we all understand pecking order. Mm -hmm. My team, that ain't about to happen. Right. But I saw that he had something in him. And he wanted it right away. A lot of guys don't have that when they come in. A lot of guys just like to go through the road, but he wanted it. 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 So as rookie year, we, we let him do what he do, make his mistakes. But the defining moment in his greatness was we were playing Utah. Nobody wanted to take the last shots. I'm not taking the last shot, shooting 40% from the free throw line. Y'all ain't gonna be talking about me. Mm -hmm. Shaq lost the game. So he takes three shots to air balls. If you can remember, and I hope you can show this clip, I was the one that grabbed him and said, hey, man, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. One day people are gonna fear you. And the next year he come in, we come in a little more. He wanted it, he wanted it, he wanted it, he wanted it, he wanted it. And 
This is where I wish I was a little bit more tactful. Egos get in the way. Mm -hmm. That word my team will mess you up. Yeah. Right? Especially from a big guy giving up to a little guy. I don't play that shit. Mm -hmm. So it, it, instead of, but fortunately it still worked out. We still won three out of four, but a lot of necessary stuff that shouldn't have happened happened because of the ego. And it was mm -hmm. probably my fault. But one thing I never do is I never disrespect nobody. Right. I ain't got to like you. I ain't got to do what you do. But if you open in the corner, Matt, even if we had a fight the other day, mm -hmm. I know you're going to knock that down for mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I'm kicking it. it. So, you know, even though we didn't hang out or do anything of that, I'm always looking for him first. And he's always looking for me when he go into the hole to get double team, he drop it off. So I, I think that helped us. Kobe stopped talking to his teammates. They say Kobe didn't talk to the team for two weeks. Yeah. For two weeks. Literally would not say anything to anybody. Like he just went silent, silent. But he was he was on one million. And when they, they talked to Phil Jackson, the teammates were like, what's, what's going on, what's going on? He's so they said, Phil, what's up with Kobe? He mad at us? It was like, nah, he ain't mad at you. Well, Jordan told him that comment and it upset him. In Washington, it's like, in what? Two weeks ago? He's like, yeah, he told him, uh, he can copy Molly he won't and do all that, but he'll never fulfill those shoes. So they already knew what was, what was coming. So then the Wizards came to Los Angeles to play. Hey, they was like, yeah, I feel sorry for uh, next time we play Jordan. <laughs> Kobe scored 42 points in the first half. Wearing that distinctive headband out for Kobe. Five on the shot clock, Kobe a long... Kobe looking in the corner, instead stops the baseline, squares up. 23 consecutive points scored by Kobe. 30 points in the game. That was a nice looking shot. Pull up check against Kwame Brown, crossover, pull up check shot. Good again. They said they already knew Damn, that's what tough. was about to happen against MJ when MJ came to LA. Wow. And they said, sure enough, Kobe went out and that motherfucker said, I, like they, it wasn't what's right. He didn't even have to tell the team once they heard they knew what happened is what Kobe decided to do. I just remember the first time, not the first time, but I felt like I, I felt like I, I gained to his respect because we we playing. I'm in Denver, he's in LA, and obviously, but I'm I'm playing and I come on the court. So you know you come on the court. That's I don't speak that's why it's like it's hard to speak to people when they come on the court. Cause you don't know what their mentality is. They might, they might dub you, right? They might not even say nothing to you. They might shake, might not shake your hand. So, right. Kobe go, go, comes on the court, gives me dab. I give him dab. So throughout the game, he's like saying little shit to me, like, "Oh yeah, now we gonna let you, we gonna let you go off right now, until the fourth quarter. I'm gonna guard you in the fourth quarter." And I'm like, "Get the fuck, what? Get out, get out of here. You gonna guard me? What you? Why you don't guard me now?" He's like, "No, no, 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 no." I'm not here to stop you. We here to stop you. So when you young and hear that, you be like, oh, like what? What is it? What is he talking about? I'm about to get buckets. <laughs> so the game went on. The game goes on, and fourth quarter comes. I mean, he's getting every call. He's fouling. They're not calling shit. And he's just like, I told you. I told you what's about to happen. And I'm like, what's what's happening? He's like, All right, let's go. Let's let's give the world what they want to see. I offensive rebound. He fouling me, grabbing me. He come down, I foul him hard. He, I come back down, he fouled me hard. We just talking, we talking trash. I had my braids then. The most disrespectful shit anybody can do is touch your braids. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 somebody got a tech. I don't know if it was me or somebody. I like, got a tech and we at half quarter. He like hit the hit, like hit the bottom of my braids like, like on purpose, like to smack. Like the yeah, just like calm down, Lord. Like calm down, Lord, bro. Like that. <laughs> Like he, like he little bro me like he sunned me right there. I'm just like I'm ready to kill this. Like you don't touch my braids. So then from that point on, it was just like after the game, he came to me. He was just like, "You got my respect." And I'm like, "What did like? What are you talking about? Like what? We gotta play for your respect? Like I, at this time, I don't know. Like I, <laughs> we gotta, I gotta play for your respect. No, I'm trying to come out here and go and 
tear you apart. Right. And he's like, he's like, nah, like, you know, you didn't back down. Like, you went hard. Like, I'm even hurting right now. Like, yo, my chest hurt, my body hurt, boom, boom, boom. Like, I, I wasn't, you know, I, I wanted to see if you was going to stand the test of time. I said, oh, this, this motherfucker going some some good Coleon shit over here. Like, he the godfather over here. I got to kiss the ring? That's what I was. That's what I was thinking. Like that's, but for him to, for him to like, almost crown me at that point in time. Like you know what I mean. Like he donned me. Like oh, okay, here you good, you good in the book in the in the book of uh, you know he was eight at the time. You good, you good in the book of eight. Right. And so ever since then we became close, 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 talking, and then similar to us, it was just more. It was at first it was just all basketball. Then over the years it became about friendship then it became about family then it just became about just life in general right so that's like that's that's my story of like didn't know i was being tested by him but being tested and like passing it passing a test without you even knowing it playing against kobe man kobe used to talk trash but it's hard to kind of go back and forth with him not only because he shoot a lot but he making the motherfucker he's a bad motherfucker and you don't get that many attempts no not even close so i got i finally got a post up on him you know what I, mean? I got the ball on the post i'm backing him down you know i'm looking at him like I'm a little nigga and i'm gonna you know that's how i'm looking at him hit him with the shoulder i turn around and shoot it he just wow whole arm off right the referee, I'm on the baseline. The referee right there. So I turn and look at the referee. Kobe takes off with the ball. I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm talking to the referee, arguing with him. And um, as I'm talking to the ref, I'm Kobe is saying something to me. Like, you better pay attention. Like, you know what I'm saying? Fuck all that. Because I, I start saying something to Kobe, too, about hacking ass. You know what I'm saying? So as I'm talking to the referee, Kobe shoots like 10 feet from the three-point line. Net. And gives me a little smirk. <laughs> like, look at me. And then the referee look at me like, like he on Kobe's side, you know what I'm saying? Kobe just run down the court, just talking to me like I'm a kid. And next thing you know, Pop just subbed me out the game. <laughs> so I'm on the sideline looking like I was just a bump, you know what I mean? And Arn called me up and was like, you know, do you want, do you mind talking to this young kid and show him what the NBA is all about and how to conduct yourself? I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll talk to this this kid. We were set to play a game of basketball versus the world, the real world cast. It was shot in Hollywood, and all I remember is Gail continuing to say to me, look, when you guys get there, you're going to get there before the cast of Real World. All Kobe wants to do is play you one-on-one. -on -one. He just wants to play you one-on-one, one-on-one, one-on-one. I'm like, I'm like, all right, I'll play a soft game of one-on-one -on -one versus them, but our focus should be going against the Real World <laughs> cast. <laughs> you know, I'm doing my step-back jumper. I know you've alluded to this before. And he's like, how do you do that move? And I, you know, I kind of show him because I was trying to take things from him as well. He had this killer crossover. I'm like, wow, well, how do you do that? So we're exchanging our go-to moves. Well, a conversation turned into text messages and phone calls every day. Because, like you said, he was gathering information. We reached the Bulls in the conference finals. And he was like, so what was it like what, going to get Jordan? He wanted to be bigger than life. And at that time, that person bigger than life, and still is, is Michael Jordan. And I didn't have a very strong relationship with MJ. But Kobe wanted to know what was all the intricate talking and trash talking and moves that were going on between MJ and I. Kobe Bryant is guarded by Michael Jordan. And the pull away by Kobe Bryant. That's the future, and even Michael Jordan.